Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve was suddenly sent to the hospital for an appendectomy. Now he's home again, and his doctor has pronounced him in the pink. In fact, he's as healthy as a horse and can't wait to get back into harness. Why, George, I feel great this morning. Oh, you look wonderful, Auntie. Yeah, thank you, Margie. The apples are back in your cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's them two baked apples you ate for breakfast before he had his bacon, eggs, pancakes, and syrup. <laughs> Well, Barry, there's nothing wrong with my appetite. No, sir. You going down to the office this morning? You bet. Of course, everybody will be coming in asking about my operation. Probably won't get much work done today. No, sir. Yeah, I wonder why a fellow's operation is always so fascinating to other people. <laughs> Very annoying the way they pester you for details. Say, did I tell you how hard it was for the doctor to make me unconscious? Yes, Auntie. We heard about it. Well, that sort of thing is what everybody else is wanting to know. Frankly, I dread today. You know, I have to tell the same story over and over again to everybody I meet. Well, you certainly had plenty of practice, Anki. Was it, my day? Well, yesterday you told the laundry man and the postman, and this morning it was the paper boy. Well, I couldn't get away from them. Mr. Gilsley, do you think you ought to be running out and cornering these people without a hat and coat? Bertie, they'll want to hear the story sometime. I'm just trying to get it over with. Who's that? It's the milkman. I better go bring in the milk. I'll do that, Mr. Gillsleeve. You never bring in the milk. Well, I feel like doing it today. Milkman! Milkman! Hey, milkman! Hey, he left in a hurry. Maybe the postman warned him. <laughs> You make it sound as if my operation is all I talk about. After all, who brought up the subject this morning? I didn't. I didn't. Well, I did. Yeah. Yo, there's Leroy out in the yard with his little girlfriend. I haven't seen Bab since my operation. Mr. Gilfrey, before you run out this time, will you please put on your hat and coat? Oh, yes, Bertie, I intend to. Alpha Mort, you'll never get to the office. Here, let me help you with your coat. Yeah, and you... Yeah, thank you, Marjorie. Yeah. I think I should talk to Baz before I go. My mother's out of town, and Baz would probably want to write to her. Tell her I'm all right. Give her some of the details. Oh, I'm sure she will, Auntie. Yeah, ta-ta, my dear. I'll be home at five. And if you get tired, you come home earlier. Yeah, I won't get tired. The water commissioner has a full head of steam. Hi, Auntie. Hello, Leroy. Well, Babs. I haven't seen you for several days now. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. You look as though you kiddies are going skating. We are. As soon as Leroy puts new laces in my skate shoes. Can't you hurry, Leroy? Well, I have to rip out the old laces first. Hmm. Say, that reminds me of a few days ago when the doctor took out my stitches like that. <laughs> okay, Babs, where are the new laces? Here they are. Uh, I had an operation, you know. Yeah. Babs, I guess Leroy told you I had an operation. Another one? <laughs> no, the one I had last week. My appendectomy. Oh, that. Yeah, I told her. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure. Thought you might like to write to your mother about it, since she's been away for a few weeks. She came back last night. She did? Well, and you told her all about it. No, I didn't. You didn't? <laughs> Well, we had a lot of important things to talk about. No. Well, I thought you may have sneaked in the conversation. Well, frankly, Mr. Gildersleeve, I forgot all about your operation. We haven't. <laughs> Besides, I, I thought you'd enjoy telling Mother, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, it isn't that I enjoy talking about my operation. <laughs> Okay. Well, I guess it's better that your mother was out of town when I was hospitalized. You know how concerned women get. Don't lace it too tight, Leroy. Okay. 
Well, I have to get down to the office. So long, huh? In Babs, when you see your charming mother, tell her not to worry. Worry about what? <laughs> you forget it. Goodbye, children. Yeah, it's good to be sitting down at the old desk again. Yeah. 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 Fine chair. Hmm. Everything looks about the same. Except there's a layer of dust in the dust. <laughs> Just a janitor didn't expect me back so soon. <laughs> you well. Well, people start calling to ask about me. You think I'll give Paula a jingle? <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that Babs didn't tell her I'd been in the hospital. Too bad I had to have the operation while she was out of town. It would have been nice to have her sitting by my sick bed, holding my hand. <laughs> I wonder where she is. Nobody answers. You know, I have to try later. Gilda! Gilda! Oh, nice to see you back at the office, Gilda. How are you feeling? Well, now that you asked me that, sit down, Judge. I really haven't time. You see, I dropped in to... Hey, speaking of how I'm feeling, I feel fine. Do you realize, Horace, that they had me out of that hospital in three days? Oh, why didn't you pay your bill? <laughs> Yikes. That's the way they do things in hospitals these days. They make you ambulate. I know, I know. Of course, they do things differently nowadays. When I was in the hospital back in 1909... Judge. Was it 1910? It was 1910. The year of Haley's Comet. Oh, my goodness. I was flat on my back for two weeks. And would you believe it, Gildy? I was out of my head for three days. He's still out of his head. <laughs> well, back in the days when I had my operation... Judge, please. You just don't bore people with the details of your operation. Oh? Well, all you right. take a case like mine now. Well, I'm out. Just be thankful it's all over. Uh, Gilde, I'm going to the midwinter dance at the country club, and I wonder if I can borrow your dress couplings. Oh, yes, of course, Judge. Fine. I'll drop by your house this afternoon and get them. Summerfield's elite will be there. And I want to look my dapper best. This is the party of the year. Hmm. I didn't realize it's being out of touch. Be in the hospital, you know. Yeah, I know. Too bad you have to miss it. But I'll tell you all about it. I'll bring you my dance program. You'll find. There's something about a judge that fascinates beautiful women. They all want to dance with me. <laughs> yes, yes. Goodbye, Gildy. Da, 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 da. <laughs> hmm. I've seen dancing bears, but never a waltzing old goat. <laughs> I don't understand how a man's friends can be so indifferent. You think I had an operation every day? Yeah. Phoebe has changed his window display. I guess I'd ought to drop in. Being a druggist, you want to know what pills and medicine they gave me. Hello, Phoebe. Hello, hmm, Mr. Gildersleeve. I didn't expect to see you out today. Well, I surprised everybody. Just think, it's only a week since my operation. Here I am down at the office working. You don't say I'd swear you were standing here talking to me. <laughs> you know what I mean, Pete. Now, let's see. Do you realize I was up on my feet the day after my operation? Two cans of tooth powder, one ghost of toothbrushes. Phoebe, what are you doing? I'm taking inventory, Mr. Gildersleeve. Inventory? Yes, I'm a little behind. If you'll pardon me, I'll get on with it. You'll go right ahead, Phoebe. I won't interrupt you. Okay, well... Eight bottles of cough syrup. When I was in the hospital, I took some medicine that color, Phoebe. Of course, it wasn't for a cough. <laughs> I'm really keeping quiet. Dozen <laughs> <laughs> bottles of vitamin pills, large economy size. Phoebe, they gave me some pills that looked like those, too. Half a dozen men's shaving lotion. Razor blades, two, four, six, eight. Phoebe, do you know what my nurse said the last night she was on duty? That she couldn't make dates during business hours? <laughs> mm, 
no, Peter. She said I was the best patient she ever had. My, my. See where was I? Oh, razor blade. 10, 12, 14. Petey, do you know what the doctor said? All right, all right. Mr. Gildersleeve, what did the doctor say? What did the intern say? What did the orderly say? And what did the man in the parking lot say? <laughs> Petey, you've got me all wrong. I didn't come in here to talk about my operation. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you're all right. And I know you're not interested. Unfortunately, I don't need any sympathy. I'm hale and hearty. Good. That's why I didn't worry about you too much. That's all right, Peavy. I've learned my lesson. I'll never bring up the subject again. Well, good morning, Mrs. Winter. Paula. Good morning, Mr. Peavy. And Frost Morton, how nice to see you. Hello, Paula. <laughs> nice to see you. Did you have a good trip? Delightful. I guess you heard I've been in the hospital. Yes, I just heard it this morning. It was such a shock. Yeah, oh, it was nothing. <laughs> nothing. You find out. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Peavy, I need some cosmetics. Will you fill out this list while Frog Morton tells me about his trip to the hospital? Okay, well. You will, Paula. It's quite a story. You take your time, Peavy. Don't worry. I won't rush you. Frog <laughs> <laughs> Morton, I'm so pleased that you recovered so quickly. You look wonderful. You know, I feel great. Hard to keep a good man down, you know. I couldn't wait to get down to the office this morning. You've been working this morning? Yep, I'm on my way back to the office now. Raring to go. Oh, that's good news. When I was first told about you, I had visions of you lying in bed convalescing. Not me. In fact, I planned to come over this afternoon and sit by your bedside and hold your hand. <laughs> oh? Seriously, I did think you'd like me to come over and read to you. Well, there's nothing wrong with holding my hand either. I mean, <laughs> what time did you plan to come over? Oh, I plan to come over around two. Two o'clock. But of course, it won't be necessary now. You know, perhaps I got up too soon. <laughs> the man can have a relapse, you know. Oh, not you. Yeah, I don't know, Paula. I'm just beginning to realize how weak I am. <laughs> uh, excuse me, here are your cosmetics, Mrs. Winter. Oh, thank you, Mr. Peavy. You come to think of it, Paula. Every afternoon around two, I seem to have a little sinking spell. So I'd better go home for it. Why don't you, Trock Morton? You shouldn't exert yourself. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't. Paula, mm -hmm. would you mind helping me to my car? I'm a little weak in the knees. Oh, you poor boy. Goodbye, Mr. Peavy. Goodbye, Peavy. Goodbye. <laughs> I guess that's why he's the water commissioner. He sure can turn it on. Mr. Gilfrey, we didn't expect you home this noon. Well, Bertie, I made a mistake. I got up too soon. Yes, sir. Would you mind straightening up my dressing table? No, sir. In Bertie. Yes, sir. You'd better get some of those pills and tonics out of the medicine cabinet. Put them beside my bed, where they'll be handy. Yes, sir. Any particular ones, Mr. Gilfrey? Yeah, just use your own judgment, Bertie. I'm busy. It and you. Uncle Moore? Yeah, hello, Marjorie. What are you doing with that big chair? Yeah, moving it over by the bed. Did you bring it all the way upstairs from the living room? Yep. Why? He says he's having a relapse. <laughs> a relapse? Mr. Gilfrey, I'll put your silk pajamas on the foot of your bed. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Is that the pair with the poodle dogs on them? Yes. Uncle Mort, if you're going to bed, why did you bring that big chair up here? Well, I may have company. Now, if you ladies will excuse me, I'll go shave. Again? Mr. Gilfrey, can I fix you a little chicken broth for lunch? Yeah, I don't think so, Bertie. You don't feel like eating anything? Well, I didn't say that. Do you have any potato salad left over from dinner last night? Yes. <laughs> Good. I'd like a big scoop of that with some lettuce and whip. I'll bring it right up. Hey, wait a minute, Bertie. You might make me a couple of sandwiches out of that cold roast beef with a sliced dill pickle on the side. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uncle Mort, should you eat like that? Well, actually, I'm hungry. 
This doesn't sound like a relapse to me. Miss Marjorie, he's having what you might call a hungry relapse. Yeah, Bertie. I better get down to the kitchen because Mr. Gilsey is having the hungriest relapse I ever saw. You're all right, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, do you know what you're having? Yes, Bertie. That's Bertie. right, you're having the hungriest relapse I ever saw. <laughs> you're right, George. That was a fine lunch. Hmm, Paula should be here in a few minutes. I'll just slide the tray under the bed. Yeah. 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 Now I'll snuggle down under the covers and relax until she comes. <laughs> you what a break. Running into Paula at Peavy's. Yeah, better fluff up my pillow a little. No. Let her do it. <laughs> Sweet of her to want to come over and sit with me. What else could I do but go back to bed? I can hear her now. Would you like me to fluff up the pillow, Frock Morton? You good idea. Dear. Mm. <laughs> what a vision of loveliness. Oh, you poor darling. Yeah. <laughs> Will it help if I caress your forehead? Well, it couldn't do any harm. <laughs> your mother? Well, she can't come over until later, so she sent me to read to you. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Anna, what happened? When did you fall apart? <laughs> uh, Leroy. You, you look so well this morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. That's my uncle for you. He probably could hardly drag himself to the office, but did he complain? No, Leroy. No, sir. He went down to work and stayed until he had to be carried home. <laughs> Mother did say Mr. Gildersleeve had to lean quite heavily on him when she helped him to the car. Uh, yes, but uh, I'm feeling better now. In fact, Babs, if your mother isn't coming over, I may get up. Yeah, I mean, did she say when she'd be over? No, just later. Down in that big easy chair, Babs. Hmm. Yeah, but... Oh, this is so comfortable. Now, yeah, kiddies, don't you worry about me. Why don't you run out and play? We wouldn't think of this. We're going to stay all afternoon. Zeke. <laughs> I, I brought a wonderful book to read to you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You have it. You insist. Is that one of your mother's books? No, it's one of mine. Gladys Tubbs, Girl Cheerleader. <laughs> oh, brother. Arts Keen, Unc. It's all about Gladys and the star basketball player who couldn't play in the big game because he had to work to support his father and mother. And Gladys, the cheerleader... Leroy, can... don't tell him the story. Let me read it to him. Okay, okay. Are you ready, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, I guess so. Chapter One. A heavy gloom spread throughout Belmont High as the fateful word passed from classroom to classroom. High Pockets Johnson quits the team. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody could guess the reason. Only Gladys Tubbs, girl cheerleader, knew what went on in High Pockets' troubled mind. Yeah, how do I get into these things? Chapter 10. Belmont Forever. Yeah, five o'clock. Pretty exciting, huh, Unc? I can hardly stand it. <laughs> this is my favorite chapter. It was the last one. It's my favorite, too. <laughs> it was the night of the big game. Would it be Belmont's Waterloo? Or would High Pockets Johnson be able to hitchhike back to town in time for the game? Eofer. Don't worry, Unc. He makes it. Leroy! <laughs> A thousand doubts and fears assailed poor Gladys as she picked up her megaphone and yet... You stop, Babs. Stop the doorbell. Stop. Yes. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your story, Vance. Must be Mother. High Pockets wins the game, Unc. Bully for High Pockets. <laughs> Give me that again! 
You find Bertie, have her come up. It isn't her, it's a him. <laughs> Judge, I thought you were Mrs. Winthrop. Well, thank you. Hello, Babs, Leroy. Hi, Judge. Hello, Judge Hooker. Well, now that you got company enough, we'll see you later. Come on, Babs. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, I talk, kiddies. Hmm. Gildy, you faker. What are you doing in bed? What do you mean, faker? I was at Peavy's, and he told me all about it. Will you help me to my car, Paula? <laughs> I'm weak in the knees. You goat. Where, where is she? Did she disappoint you? Yes, she'll be here, Judge, so why don't you leave? I'd like to. If you'll give me your dress cuff links, I'll go home and bedeck myself for the dance. Yeah, get on the dresser, Judge, and try to keep them out of your soup. <laughs> Before. Judge, run on to your dance and have a good time. Oh, I will. I enjoy dancing. And all the ladies like to dance with his honor, the judge. You told me that. Now go, please. Miss Gildersleeve, he's here. Miss Winthrop's on a Come up, Paula. Goodbye, Judge. Gildy, I can't leave without greeting the charming Mrs. Winthrop. Judge. Oh, Ralph Morton, I'm sorry I'm late. Yeah, that's all right, Paula. I've been waiting. Oh, hello, Judge. Good afternoon, Mrs. Winthrop. Come over here, Paula, and take this nice chair by the bed. Goodbye, Judge. Aren't you feeling any better, Throckmorton? No, indeed. Worse, if anything. In fact, I'm very hot under the collar right now. Goodbye, Judge. <laughs> well, I hate to run. Oh, Throckmorton, I'd hope that with a rest this afternoon, you'd feel like going out tonight. Going out? Uh-huh. I'd hoped you'd be able to escort me to the dance at the club this evening. Are you going to the dance? Well, of course. I'm chairman of the decorating committee. That's why I couldn't come over earlier. Paula, well, why didn't you tell me you wanted me to go? Yeah, I'm fine. I'll get up and dress and we'll go. Judge, give me back my couplet. But kill that. Now, Throckmorton, you stay in bed and take care of yourself. Paula, well, I'm completely recovered. I'm strong as an ox. I can dance all night. Oh, Throckmorton, I knew you'd take this attitude. That's why I didn't dare tell you at Mr. Peavy's. I just knew you'd insist on overtaxing yourself. Paula, no. believe me, I'm a well man. If you were entirely well, you wouldn't have wanted to go back to bed this afternoon. Mm, trapped. <laughs> if you take my advice, guilty old friend, you take it easy. Yes, Throckmorton, there'll be other dances. But... I'll have one of the girls on my committee pick me up. Uh, Mrs. Winthrop. Yes, Judge. I'm going to the dance, and it just so happens I'm a stag tonight. Hey! <laughs> and if you do me the honor, I'd be delighted to take my sick old friend's place. Well, thank you, Judge. How very thoughtful. But, Paula, Judge. Now, Gilda, you stay here and take your medicine. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I wasn't sick, but I sure am now. <laughs> that Judge Hooker. What a sneaky old goat. Yeah, right, well, George. I'm not going to lie here in bed all evening. I can tell you that. How do you feel, Mr. Hill, please? Oop. Oh, much better, Bertie. <laughs> in fact, I was thinking of getting up. Not good to stay in bed too much after an operation like mine. No, sir. And whether a man feels like it or not, he should be up and moving around. Yes, sir. You want to risk complications by staying in bed. No, sir. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing, except Mr. Peter called a while ago. He said, don't worry about Mr. Gelsey. He'll be up before you know it. He's just playing possum. <laughs> <laughs> Peter said that? Yes, sir. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to get up anyway. I'll just steer clear of Petey, that's all. You bet. Now I'll get dressed and maybe just pop into the dance at the country club and surprise Paula. Hey, aren't you going visitor? Mr. Peavy? Over. Back in bed. Oh, hello, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> hello, Petey. I was on my way home. I thought I'd stop in and see how the invalid is getting along. Well, I'm pretty weak, Petey. But I'm all right. 
nice of you to stop in. Wouldn't want you to be late getting home. No, in no hurry. A man can get pretty lonesome when I in his room alone. I thought I'd come and sit with you a while. Please. Mm, not going any place, were you? No, no. Having somebody to read to you helps to pass the time. Please, please. Hmm, here's your book. Let's see. Gladys Tubbs, girl, carry <laughs> A heavy gloom spread through No, oh, my goodness. Good night, folks. <laughs> by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It's partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Barbara Whiting, Dean Bates, Earl Ross, and Dick McGrath. Musical compositions by Jack Nico. This is John Easton saying goodnight for the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the National Safety Council makes me wear a helmet. It works, protects my head. The face shield keeps the bugs out of my teeth. But they sure don't protect me against tailgaters. Ah, uh, shut up! Doesn't that guy know if he blows a horn in my ear, it might unnerve me, make me lose control and have an accident and get hurt or worse? Besides, I'm not trying to hog the lane. Equal rights, that's all I ask for. I'm, I'm driving a legitimate, well-developed, and highly specialized form of transportation. <laughs> Oh, come on, shut up. But look, if you want to pass me, buddy, just tap your horn once or twice, but lightly. You know, then you can pass me just like I was a regular car. You idiot! You don't slice a motorcyclist off. You move out completely into the passing lane. Is that the way you pass cars? Huh? You didn't listen to me. Oh, I'm glad that guy's gone. Oh, boy, here comes another one. Some days it doesn't pay to get out of bed. <laughs>